Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we will be doing another example of arrays. So in this example, it's going to be slightly harder. What we will be doing in this example is we will be using arrays to calculate values. So let's say we want to do the Fibonacci sequence. Now what is the Fibonacci sequence? So the Fibonacci sequence starts off with 0, 1, and then the next number is the last two numbers that we added before. So the next number would be 0 plus 1, which is 1. And to get the next number, we look at the last two numbers, 1 and 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. And then for the next number, 1 plus 2 is 3. And then the next number, 2 plus 3 is 5. And the next number, 3 plus 5 is 8. And it keeps going forever. And that's the Fibonacci sequence. So what we want to do is we want to create an array that will hold the Fibonacci sequence. So how would we do that? Let's say we want the first 20 Fibonacci numbers. Now, you could do it in your head and think, okay, 0, 1, and then 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, but then it gets like too much to think about. So we want 20. What if we wanted 50 or even 100 Fibonacci numbers? That would be a lot of adding in your head. Let's create an array that will calculate what the 20th Fibonacci number is. Now, since we want the 20th Fibonacci number, we need 20 spaces in our array. So let's create an array int, because Fibonacci numbers only have integers in them. Int, let's call it fib for Fibonacci, equals new int, and we want 20 Fibonacci numbers. So int fib equals new int 20. What we have right now is an integer array called fib, which has defaulted to all values being 0. So what do we want to do next? Well, we want to loop through it and change the values of the array. So do we want to use a regular for loop or a for each loop? Well, let's see how we wrote this out. So first we had 0 and then 1, and then we had to check for the next number what the past two numbers were. Or if we're talking about arrays, if we want to find the next value, we have to check the previous two indices. We have to check the indices of the previous two. So since we want the indices, we will have to use a regular for loop. So for int i equals 0, because 0 is the first part of the array. And then we want to go up to the size, fib.length. Si fib we want to go up to the length. And then we don't want to skip any numbers. We just want to, we want to go one by one to each number. So this is the general loop you'll want, but then how do we get the first Fibonacci number? How do we get the zero? Well, zero is already zero because this made all values zero. So since we know that Fib at zero equals zero already, we can say, well, then how do we get the one? How do we get this one? Well, we can't do zero plus something to get one. We just know that the second value is one or fib at one is one. So we know that the first value or the zeroth value rather, let's say the zeroth value is zero and the first value is one. So the first value is one and that's how we know these two. And then to get the next one, then we can look at the previous two values to find the next one. So we're not starting off at i equals 0. We're actually starting off at i equals 2, because we already know 0, 1, 
and then we want to start at two where we can look at the previous two indices to get their values. So how do we create the next Fibonacci number? So we want to set the next Fibonacci number. We've already set zero because this defaulted all values to zero. So right now all our values are zero and we know that the zeroth value is zero from this and we know the first value is one from this. How do we know what this value is? Well, this is the next value. So since we're starting off at i equals 2, we can say fib at i. So now we're at, we're at fib of 2. Fib of 2 equals, well, what we did here to get this number is we added what these previous two values were. So to get the previous two values, we can access that by saying fib at 1 plus fib at 0. But if we do fib at 1 plus fib at 0 here, what we will be doing is we will be saying at fib of 2, we'll be getting 0 or 1 plus 0. At fib of 3, three when we i plus plus and come back around and it's three then we'll be saying three is fib at one plus fib at zero which would be one plus zero so fib at three would be one plus zero and then four would be one plus zero five would be one plus zero we don't want that to happen we want to look at the previous value so we have an i here which is the current value now if we want to look one value before then we have i equals 2, so we want i equals 1. We want this value at i equals 1, and that's just i minus 1. And in our case, for the first time through the loop, that would be 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get fib at 1 equals 1. Then we want, so we got this value now. We're trying to find this value, and we got this value by doing i minus 1 inside the brackets. So this plus this to get this. Now how do we get this? We already have this which was the fib at i minus 1. But to get this part we have to do the one that's before this. So this was fib at i minus 1. So this is fib at i minus 2. Because i is where we currently are which is 2 in the first, when we go through the loop the first time, we're at 2, which is here. So to set this value, we have to look at the one before it and the one that's 2 before it. So the one that's before it is the i minus 1, and the one that's 2 before it is the one at i minus 2. So if we go through it again, then we will say, okay, int i equals 2, so we're at fib of 2, which is this, fib of 2 will give us fib of 1, which is 1, plus fib at i minus 2, which is 2 minus 2, which is 0, and fib of 0 we know is 0. So this will actually give us the previous plus the one before that. And then when this increments to 3, then we're going to try to find this value and it'll do, well, i will be at 3, and then we will say, i minus 1, which is 2, plus i minus 2, which is 1. So if we just think about the i, then i is 3, then 3 minus 1 is 2, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So this would be 3, 2, 1, which would be 3, 2, 1. And then when this is, when we i plus plus, i will be 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we'd have 4, 3, 2, so it would be 4, 3, 2, and then for 5, 4, 3, and we'd have 6, 5, 4, and so on and so forth. So this looks like we will get up to the fib.length, which is 20.
So this should give us the first 20 Fibonacci numbers. If we print it out, and remember to keep this import, java.util.arrays, to get the shortcut, so we do system.out, out.printf, percent %s, and we do arrays.toString fib. Remember to include this import when you're using this shortcut. And then we can save it and run it, and we get the first 20 Fibonacci numbers. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 4184 is the 20th Fibonacci number. Now, what if we just wanted the 20th Fibonacci number? What if we don't want to print out the entire list? If we just wanted the 20th Fibonacci number, we could do system system.out.printf percent %d because we're printing an integer and we want to print the last value of the array. So we could do fib at fib.length minus 1. So fib.length is 20, but arrays start at 0. So there is no fib, fib of 20. Fib of 20 does not exist. That's out of bounds. But we do have a fib at 19. That's the last part of the array. So if you want to access the last element of the array, you have to access the length minus 1. This will give us the last element of the array. If we save this, we should see 4181. And yeah, we see 4181. And the reason why I used fib.length and fib.length here and 20 over here is I can change this 20 to any number I want and then I can get that Fibonacci number. So let's say instead of the 20th Fibonacci number, I wanted the 50th Fibonacci number. So right here, I've, I've created an array that has 50 zeros in it. That's the default when you do the new. So all values are zero. Since the zeroth value is zero and the first value is one, we can go into the for loop from two, and then we can go up to 50, but just less than. So we go up to 50. We can do our Fibonacci calculation here, and we can keep going through this whole loop 48 times because we're going from two to 50. And then once we hit 50, then we can come out and we can access the last Fibonacci number. So just by changing this one number, I don't have to change this to 50. I don't have to change this to 50. I can just change it in one place. That's why I use fib.length. So if we run this, we should see the 50th Fibonacci number, which is way too big to be represented in an integer. So instead of integer, let's do long equals new long. So now we have a long of 50. A long will hold bigger values. So the reason we got a negative number down here was because the number was much bigger than 2 billion. And when you get numbers that are bigger than 2 billion, you get something called an overflow. An overflow is when it goes above 2 billion and it doesn't know what to do because it can't hold that big of a number. So then it cycles back down to the smallest number it knows, which is negative 2 billion. And right here, it seems like we got like negative 800 billion. So let's, let's try this and see. Hopefully, this will give us a big number. Yeah, it'll give us, let's see, we got 100,000 million billion. We get 77 billion as our number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, we get seven billion. Seven billion, seven hundred seventy-eight million, seven hundred forty-two thousand forty-nine. So we needed to use a long because a long is much bigger than an int. We can store much bigger values. That's why an int was too small. So if we wanted, instead of the 50th Fibonacci number, if we wanted, let's say we want the third. 
Fibonacci number. We can even do small values. We get one. If we want the second Fibonacci number, let's see what happens when we do two. We'll set zero and we'll set one. And then we'll say for int i equals two, i less than fib dot length. Well, fib dot length is two. So it won't go through here. And then it'll say fib dot length minus one. So two minus one is one. So we should just see one. It will skip this loop because this condition is not met. We have two. We set zero is already set to zero. One is set to one. And then we say i equals two. And then two is less than two. That's false. So we skip this and then we go straight to here. And we will print out fib.length minus one. So this is two. This is two. And then two minus one is one. So fib at one, we set it over here. Fib at one is one. So we should see one. And yes, we see one. Now if we do one, this is where we will get an error because there is no fib at one. So we need our number in here to be bigger than one. We cannot have a one length array because this would be out of bounds. The fib at zero would still work, but this would not work. So let's say we wanted the 25th Fibonacci number. Then we could have a number where we could put this as an integer because a long is really big, but our number here is less than 2 billion. So we could use an integer. We could use a long as well. So in the next video, we will be doing a sorting example with arrays. We will be sorting an array. We'll have an array with values that are out of order, and then we will sort them.